Good morning, everybody. It's Captain CA here with Flats Class YouTube. And do I have a treat for you guys today? I'm telling you. Uh, we just wrapped up an amazing shoot for Flats Class University. And for those of you that don't know what Flats Class University is, it's an online fishing school that I do with Waypoint Television. So go to waypointtv.com and you can watch some of our previous courses. In this particular episode of Flats Class YouTube, I'm gonna to reveal to you some of the behind the scenes stuff that happens on one of these courses. And I'm going to do it with a good friend of mine that owns Silver Lining Sport Fishing, and that's Captain Socrates. Now, Sock has a giant reputation, and if you're not following him already on Instagram, you need to go at Captain Sock and go check him out. The guy produces some big fish and is kind of known in this region as the quintessential guide if you want to learn how to snook fish. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to send you on our little trip with Sock, and I'll be back here in a little bit to explain what's going on during the day. Go watch us now. It's going to be a good time. Class YouTube is brought to you by Aquatraction, your go-to solution for advanced marine flooring. I think a lot more of our fish stay offshore. What do you think? I do too. Well, I think we have a static depth here. Well, what are you putting in there? Lots of perfect size fish. Look at those, baby. Yeah. Yeah. Hog is, legs. We're going to talk snook secrets with Captain Socrates today. Buds uh, from Crystal River, Florida. This is Captain Socrates. And we're out shooting Flats Class YouTube naturally, but we're also shooting a brand new Snook Secrets course for Flats Class University that's gonna air on Waypoint Television. So today, not the ideal condition. It's blowing, buddy. Yeah, it's blowing. And the tide's probably a solid foot and a half higher, higher than it should be right yes. now. So extreme conditions, but if nothing else, we're going to share an awful lot of Snook secrets with you today to put you on the path to success. Waffle sitting on your dash with just a little bit of syrup on it. Yes. A Coca-Cola. That's how you have energy to be able to fish day and night, get bait, whatever you got to do. It's this kind of nutrition. I mean, Keeps this me is going, baby. This is the secret. You guys wanted to know the secret. How this guy stays awake, how he stays alert, how he stays sharp. It's Coke and waffles. Waffles on a nice, clean cup. <laughs> He's a badass. His name is Socrates. They do say breakfast is the most important meal of the day. Yeah. Eating waffles off the dash of your boat? Washing it down with Coca-Cola? Well, obviously Sock did not go to health class. But aside from that, he's a fantastic fisherman, as you're going to see next. Watch this, because he's going to employ his secret weapon. He's gonna put us into the wind but we're gonna catch a fish, so let's go do it. You know, don't you love it when guys put pressure on themselves when they say we're going to catch a fish? Because now there's a lot of pressure whether we're going to catch a fish. I'm assuming we're gonna put on what? Big old hog leg. <laughs> <laughs> 
for those of you that don't speak fluent Socrates, that's a giant mullet that we're gonna go over here. We're gonna toss in a healthy size hog leg mullet uh, and then produce a snook for you quite quickly. Um, in the meantime, we have been giving out tons of information here on Flats Class University, talking about night stalk fishing, talking about what artificial lures are your best daytime go-getters. Uh, we've been talking a lot about tides, a lot about structure, and a lot about the habitat and time of year that, it, that you really need to know to be successful to put more snook in your, in your boat or your kayak this summer. So uh, watch for this on Waypoint TV, but uh, it'll probably drop in about a week. So uh, we're gonna head over here and try to catch a snook and I'll be right back. I'm not feeling any pressure at all. Me this... neither. All good. All good. <laughs> You gotta get one. <laughs> I told look you at, we'd get one. Look at this sky, it's all bluebird today, but that moon is getting in the right spot now. They're so. starting to turn on, buddy. So now we've, we've got one. We're gonna get him on this turn of the tide. I got a feeling. Starting to come in. Nope. Yeah, I think we're okay. Talk about how you support these fish, you know. And you, you, you always, on the smaller fish, it's not as necessary that circle hook got them great on the smaller fish it's not as necessary they don't have as much weight but you do want to try and hold them horizontally and support that belly because they live in zero gravity you take them out of the water that's and all true all their organs if it's a big 20 pound fish their organs will start to rearrange yeah you can't have that it's a beautiful fish buddy i thought it was a jack <laughs> Great. Love it when a plan comes together. Love it. Well, the struggle was real for a while there until he employed his hog leg. <laughs> Once he caught one on it, then he ascertained that we needed more hog legs. So uh, we go on a little bait collection run here uh, with sock and you'll you'll see that and this is all part of the flats class university course and then uh i'll be back here in a moment or two after you watch this uh, to talk about some of the artificials that we did use and did have some success on so i'm going to share that with you guys and then um you'll see what happens here at the end it's pretty uh it's pretty comical Back with my coffee. Well, after the bait collection, and he was very successful, we completely reloaded on hog legs. So uh, once the hog leg well was full, we uh, we moved on. You saw that Stephen was shooting some uh, right here. You can see that Stephen was shooting some some footage of of sock talking about how you rig, what the requirements are for for rigging these oversized finger mullet uh, to catch these big snook. And believe it or not, we did catch some other fish. I caught a red fish, I'm not gonna put it in here. Uh, caught some miscellaneous fish and some small snook that don't matter, a smaller than what we caught. <laughs> uh, but that's just part of fishing with, uh, with artificial lures and with live bait. You're going to have some of those incidental catches. But once we got some business done, 
in the course, we actually sat down and talked a lot about what Z-Man ba baits I was throwing and also about what mirror lures uh, I was employing in this particular free course on Waypoint TV. And I'm going to go over real quick some of the mirror lures uh, that I used because I ended up catching a cobia on one. Um, Ray came by and there was a cobia. But let's go over these real quick. Uh, first thing is having a good complement of topwater baits because snook love hitting surface walkers. So we talked a little bit about the he and she dogs and, and how effective they are on not the best days where you're pulling fish up from bigger water. And then kind of the utility uh, surface walker, if you will, which is the Top Dog Junior, which has got a big one knock in it. I walked this quickly across the surface because we're in late spring, early summer. These snook are aggressive. They're blowing up. Then we talked about some of the bigger profiles uh, because I'm a big profile guy when it comes to snook tackle. So uh, believe it or not, this is one of my faves right here. This is the XXL, the 37MR Mirrodin. Now, I use this a lot for tarpon as well. But when you've got schools of snook and they're fired up and you hear the popping and stuff, you throw this in there, you're going to get a big one. Uh, it's, it's a guarantee. Uh, something that's probably more useful to you and a lot of uh, the avid snook fishermen are a big believer in that. And that is the Catch 5. And this color here happens to be one of my favorites. The cracked glass silver sides, white belly with the black back on it with the red eye. Boy, this is a dynamite bait for me. And then um, stuff that's more readily available, especially if you're fishing creeks and stuff, are the MR27s. Uh, this is a mangrove honey color. It's a custom color here at, at Flats Class. Uh, I customize some of the baits and I talk about that in the course. This is a 51 MR. You'll notice that the line tie, it's a fast sinking plug, but it's got a lot of darting action. Uh, I use this many times for snook in place of the old 7M, which is more of a floater diver. This one stays down and I can work it quickly. It has a very good finger mullet look to it. So that, that one's a one that gets crushed a lot. Uh, some baits that you don't think about that I use a lot in creeks and sometimes in some deeper flats, and that's that's these lip plugs by Miralore. This is the Mirror Lip. It's an incredible uh, bait with a lot of action. Another one that you don't think of, I use a lot, two to four feet of water, is the MR31. This is a swim bait that came out a few years ago. Has great action. It's just cast it out, reel it back, and you catch them. Uh, Sock really likes this one here. This is one of his favorites, and that is... The mirror minnow, and then he talked a little bit in the course about the mirror glass. Now, these are fantastic around dock lights, on beaches, uh, where, they're, where the fish, the snook are laid up in the, in the swashes. So those are always great, great bites. Uh, here's an old school one again, the old Glad Shad. This is the 32MR, sinks really fast. I use it a lot around deeper docks, seawalls, uh, even, even bridge fenders and things like that where there's current. This is a fantastic bait. Fast sinker, by the way. Then everybody's favorite, which is the regular, the original MR17. Uh, and this is a, a great color as well. It's a custom color that you can get on my website, CaptainCARichardson.com. And then the one I caught the Kobe on, which is the Heavy Dean. I like the Heavy Dean for one reason. It casts great in the wind for one. And then if you've got a little bit of current or you've got a little bit of depth, then that's where, if you're paying attention to the course, that's where the snook want to be, the Heavy Dean should always be in your tackle bag. Now, I'm gonna send you guys back to the action. I'll be back here in a few minutes with some more. Boy, he was hot. He work. was hot and heavy, buddy. He was hot for You just had your little segment, sight fishing Kobe on stingrays. This is the time. Yep, look at that. How exciting was that, dude? <laughs> It's fun to watch it happen. It's fun to watch it happen. Not a snook. No? Not what we're doing, but still, nonetheless, you have to be careful with him, those little spines and that hook. Get the got a little hook out. Get the boga. Be safe. Catching redfish and we're catching cobia. <laughs> Look at that, buddy. <laughs> I'll tell you what, he wanted that pretty bad. He wanted that Twice. pretty bad. 
see if we can put that, put that on the arty so we got Head, so you can fight this current. You know, we talked about that in the artificial section of this course. I don't think he's on. Oh. I don't know. It's loaded. If we catch him, I'm getting an assist. Look at that. No way. Look at that. Look at that. We caught him on artificial and live bait. <laughs> and he yanked my so, rod in the water. So, so just so you know, Sock was trying to anchor us up and he put his rod that he had his live bait on down and Make a snook mistake. jumped it off the boat. And he's like, oh my God, my rod's gone. Twin and now, power. and now, now his twin power is all soaking wet. So he sees the cork handle floating out there. I was like, I can get it with mine. I throw my rod out there with my artificial on it and we get the snook. And the assist by the cameraman, Steven. If loving you is wrong, I don't want to be right. Uh, nice. Look at that. Look at that. And I thought it was a monster that yanked <laughs> my rod in. That's like a hey, nice. Thank, thank goodness. Thank or we would have never, we never got it back. For Captain CA, save my twin power. <laughs> oh, sight fishing. Sight fishing fishing rod. Sight fishing cobia. <laughs> Let's talk about how we release fish like sure. this. Sure, you could. A, that would be a good. That would be a good. A you good could segue. see this fish is beat up mm -hmm. on his back. Yep. A shark or something hit him. So that's a survivor. We want to make sure that we're careful on letting this fish go, so he can get a little bigger and we could catch him again. When we talk about what you really need to know, and that's how we end these courses, these these courses that we do for Flats Class University all the time. Instead of calling it what you really re need to know, I'm going to call it Socks Winning Snook Formula. It sounds way the hell better. I think so. So, <laughs> so what, are, what are things that you think you have to know to make this happen? I mean, guarantee make it happen. So for me, it all starts with having a variety of baits. Okay. So on a, on a normal day, I'm leaving the dock with four to five different types of live natural baits. Okay. But I also want to have an assortment of lures, hard baits, soft plastics, plenty of jig heads, mm -hmm. plenty of weights, whatever you think you're going to need. Being prepared, not forgetting anything. So maybe making a checklist. Okay. Sometimes I do that. And, uh, the, and, and then rod and reels, make sure you... Tackle is a big one. Your rod and reel tackle. Not being under gun. Bring some of your heavy stuff. Bring some of your light stuff. The heavy stuff might never even get used, but at least if you get in that scenario where you got some monsters around or you come into big Kobe or tarpon, whatever, you got some other tackle for those bigger fish. Be loaded for bear. That's Be right. loaded for bear. And then I would assume because most of the scenarios that you put us in today were really based off moon position and and tide. tide mostly tide and we're sitting in one hell of a rip right now so uh that's something that you have to stay in tune with that, and you may have to move your position throughout the day based off that absolutely so wind plays a huge huge role on the nature coast so we have big tide swings two to four feet sometimes so mm -hmm. a lot of water movement but if you got a really stiff west wind like we have today where it's blowing over 20 knots out of the west, we never had a low tide. That's right, we did. So, you know, knots. just looking at the tide charts is not going to be enough. You need to look at your wind direction, your wind speed, mm -hmm. because you can look at the tide charts all you want, but if it's blowing 30 out of the northeast, you, you're not going to have high water. It's gonna so that's going to change your whole day, so you need to be 
prepared, Pre aware, understand, have a good tied app or at least have great electronics so you know what's happening. And, and then just be aware of your surroundings and understand how the water moves over that bar, where those fish where position. Where the eddies are, yeah. where the mullet jump in, where is the bait getting showered? That's what I'm looking for. And the number one tip I learned today um, that I'd want to pass on to you guys is those those most aggressive snook, the ones that want to set up and really feed, are going to be on the current side of the points and bars, That's right. right on the depth change, right where the color, color changes, change. and you can see like a weed line or a bait line or a slick in a rough spot where you see the friction. That's where the feed goes. Absolutely, those are the fish that are going to be feeding. Can't thank you enough. It was you, a pleasure, you, buddy. Dude, you you are the man. You sight fished a Kobe off a ray, buddy. I sight fish your fishing rod today. <laughs> <laughs> With a snook on it. That's right. <laughs> well, it made for some awesome drama, I gotta say that. You, I knew just as soon as he laid that fishing rod down, that twin power setup down on the deck to move us tighter to the bank, to tie us off, because the mics had a lot of wind noise in them, that something was going to happen. And uh, and certainly it did. It Snook ate, ate his hog leg and jerked the whole combo into the water, and we thought it was gone forever. I'm gonna be honest with you, we thought we'd never see it again. Uh, so it, it goes into the drink, and he's scrambling around with his with his power pole pin trying to dig around for it in the bottom there hoping it got caught up and it never did and then he looks back off the transom about 25 or 30 feet back there you can see just barely the cork handle sticking out of the water so we're thinking oh he must have got wrapped up in the kelp grass in there and the rod's just sitting there maybe he pulled off and the cork handle had enough flotation to keep the rod up so i reeled in real quick and swung that five inch diesel minnow out there because i had like a three eighths jig head on it and a big wide gap hook i was using that redfish eye and i got it fortunately on the very first cast and started reeling it in and i was joking when i i noted in the video if he's still on there i get an assist because i thought for sure he wouldn't be on there and he was and uh it, w it was amazing and even stephen wright who uh who shoots the Flats Class University courses often with us for my son, even he was amazed. And did you catch that old Chris Berman ESPN reference in there? I hope you did, because that was back in the day when ESPN was some quality programming. Not so much anymore. Anyhow, uh, if you like these type of videos, they're kind of entertaining and you're learning stuff. Uh, they're fun for me too, they really are. And going out with guides like Captain Socrates, I'll tell you what, his personality, super infectious. He makes you laugh all day long. He's got energy to burn, and he's damn good at his job. I mean, really, really good. You're going to leave that experience every time knowing you're a better snook angler, and you're going to have a good time with him. You are. If you want to reach out to him, go to silverliningsportfishing.com or check out his Instagram page, like I said in the introduction, at uh, Captain Sock on Instagram, and, and message him. Uh, he is definitely worth the trip, I promise you. And I don't fish with too many of the local guides around here because I'm always traveling on the road to do these things where it's something new. Um, because I do a lot of my YouTube here, so I figured I'd just do it with guys outside. But, but Sock and I have Shimano and Sodium <laughs> as common sponsors, and we just thought he'd be the perfect uh, personality to do this with, and it turned out he was, he was the right guy for sure. If you like what you're seeing here, give us the thumbs up and subscribe to all your fishing buddies. It's my job to make you a lot better angler. Now I'm going to go get a refill of coffee. <laughs> it's still early. <laughs>